the devil are you? Don't panic. Just come up with a good story. I am a scholar. You are a donkey. Assalamu alaikum. This is the third video of the Nikah al Mata series, Debunking the Lies of Christian Prince. And I think this will be the funniest and most devastating. We will see how CP shot himself in the foot when he attempted to deny that temporary marriage was a legitimate form of marriage. In his haste to criticize anything related to Islam, he unwittingly threw his own Bible under the bus. Let us see how. Muta is considered as a kind of rental because, in general, man, basic aim in this kind of marriage is sexual enjoyment. Is that true? That the purpose of this marriage is only sexual enjoyment? And you're into women? Yeah, then. Okay, so you agree. Yeah, so guys, he said yes. Purpose. He said yes, we rent women, and the purpose of renting those women is sexual enjoyment. So how this is going to be marriage? Go ahead. How can be this? Oh, so why are marriage? Marriage is to have a family. Yeah, no. Not to have sex. Uh, no, that, that's it, part. That's uh, part. When a man, no, no, no. You see here, there's no family. It's three days. Three days. You are the one who just said that. And the purpose of it is muta, the sexual pleasure. So you hire a woman for sexual pleasure. Is, isn't okay. this is the same so, as the prostitution? Uh, if you made a marriage, if you made a marriage, mm -hmm. and the marriage did not end with a family, did not end up with the with the children, yeah, it ended not the same. It's same way like this one. No, because the purpose of that is marriage, no, the purpose of that marriage, it was not just to have sex with the women; it's just to have a family, and sex, uh, is, yeah. is sex uh, sexuality is exist there, okay. true. But here, the purpose of having this woman is not to marry her; is just to sleep with her for some time. So the purpose of what you call marriage is renting a woman and paying her wages, paying her money. Read what it says there here. And it says here, and uh, uh, it's a the, the purpose, it's a listen, listen, in general, the, the, the man basic on aim in this kind of marriage is a sexual enjoyment of the women. And in return of his enjoyment, the women receive certain amount of money and property. So what is the return of sex money? What is the purpose of this marriage? Sex only. So, so how is this marriage? So based on what CP said, we can determine how he defines marriage and nikah al muta To CP, the purpose of marriage is not to have sex only. Rather, the purpose is to have a family. And the woman is not rented or paid for sex. In contrast, CP argues that the purpose of nikah al muta is to have sex only. Having a family is not the main purpose. And the woman is, quote, rented and paid for sex. And the, quote, return for sex is money. Given these differences, CP rejects Nikah al Muta as a legitimate form of marriage. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, CP, but you just condemned the God of the Bible. Let us go to the good book, shall we? In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verses 10 through 14, we find the following law for marrying a captive of war. When you go out to war against your enemies, and the Lord your God gives them into your hand, and you take them captive, and you see among the captives a beautiful woman, and you desire to take her to be your wife, and you bring her home to your house, she shall shave her head and pare her nails, and she shall take off the clothes in which she was captured, and shall remain in your house and lament her father and her mother a full month. After that you may go into her and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. But if you no longer delight in her, you shall let her go where she wants. But you shall not sell her for money, nor shall you treat her as a slave, since you have humiliated her. Notice that the law allowed a soldier to take a beautiful woman whom he desired. After allowing her one month to lament her father and mother, the soldier is allowed to take her home as his, quote, wife. But here's the kicker. If he no longer delights in her, he is to let her go, i.e. divorce her, and not sell her as a slave. Notice that no concern for her consent to the marriage, to having sex, or to being abandoned, to send for herself, in a hostile and foreign land is provided. The only thing that the verses say regarding her is that she has been, quote, humiliated. Other transitions use words or phrases like, humbled, dishonored, made use of her for your pleasure, 
brought shame on her, violated her, and worst of all, forced her to have sex with you. And we know that the only purpose of the so-called marriage was sexual desire. The Hebrew word for desire is coupled with the word beauty for the woman. According to the Hebrew and Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament, the word literally means to be very attached to or to love somebody. But as we can see, it is not the woman's personality that the soldier fell in love with. He desired her for her beauty. This is only carnal love, and the soldier only desires her for sex. So let's come back to CP's definitions. True marriage, according to CP, is about having a family, not simply to fulfill one's sexual desires. But this is clearly at odds with the definition given in Deuteronomy 21. Here, the purpose of the so-called marriage, or shall we say forced marriage, is to have sex only, not to raise a family. Also, the woman can be released at any time at the whim of her husband if he finds no pleasure in her. And finally, the woman's well-being is never a concern, despite the fact that she would be in a foreign land with no one to support her. If CP has a problem with Nikal Mata, he should certainly have a problem with Nikal Deuteronomy. At least with Nikal Mata, the woman got something out of it. She received the mahar, or dowry. In Nikal Deuteronomy, the woman lost her family, was forced into a marriage, dishonored, humiliated, and humbled, and then just thrown away after being used without any care for her well-being. Christians like CP should have no problems rejecting the Bible. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوقًا